What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher, and I'm here with Alexander Mercurs, Editor-in-Chief of The Durant. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest developments in Brexit. All right, Alexander, 432 to 202. You just told me right before we started shooting this video, it was a slaughter. It was an absolute slaughter, uh, Alex. It's been the heaviest defeat any government in Britain has suffered in British parliamentary history. I mean, uh, you, you, comparisons have been made with a defeat suffered by Ramsay MacDonald's Labour government in the early 20s, which went down by 166 votes. This was even bigger. And I don't think any other government has been uh, come close to this. I mean, it was an absolute parliamentary massacre. I mean, the MPs looked at Theresa May's proposal and they voted overwhelmingly against it. The only people who voted for it were conservative uh, MPs who were voting for it uh, because they're part of the um, um, payroll vote. In other words, ministers, parliamentary secretaries, people like that who are members of the government, plus a few loyalists. If you look at the backbenchers, the Conservative Party's backbenchers, they also voted against this thing. So it is an absolute and total defeat of, of, of an unprecedented scale. Did, did they vote the right way, in your opinion? Yes, I don't think there's any question. I mean, I, 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 don't, I, mean, I, I am one of those people, like pretty much everyone else, who thinks this was a disastrous deal that Theresa May negotiated. I'm sorry, my dog. It's, a, it's okay. The, Keep on going. Keep on yeah. going. If, if you can. If you can. I absolutely continue. can. It was, it was absolutely the correct decision. Um, um, it would have made absolutely no sense to have voted for this deal. It was a worse deal than staying in the European European Union, because under the Irish backstop proposal, Britain could not have left the customs union uh, um, or the single market without the European Union agreeing, which would have been, uh, 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 in effect, a worse position than the one we have now, when, of course, we can leave if we are, uh, uh, if we wish. And, of course, um, at the same time, um, it, it, it subordinates Britain indefinitely to the dictates of Brussels. So I cannot see the logic of a Brexit which leaves Britain in a more subordinate position to Brussels than the one it has before Brexit takes place. So I think the, the, part, the, the MPs were absolutely right to reject it. Okay, so before we go on to what you th what the next steps are in this process, you'll explain what you th what's going to happen next. Can you explain? I, I was watching the the proceedings, and um, I was a little confused as to there were four amendments yeah. that were put forth, and only one of them was was voted on. I, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it correctly. Can you, you explain saying it, yeah, it a little bit so. as to as exactly, what, that, what went down? Yeah, I mean, this is the point. I mean, during parliamentary debates. Uh, uh, various MPs um, and usually the opposition propose amendments to whatever bill the government is putting forward. Now, those amendments are not supposed to be uh, uh, serious amendments. They're basically markers which are supposed to help the uh, uh, various parties in the debate to uh, uh, set out their positions more clearly. What actually happened was the Jeremy Corbett's amendment and the uh, uh, um, amendments put down by various Conservative MPs were dropped simply because the Jeremy Corbyn and those MPs, those Conservative MPs, decided that there was no value in them. Uh, uh, it was already pretty clear what was going on. And one MP pressed on with his amendment, which, again, is an inconsequential amendment, and it only attracted 24 votes from, presumably, his friends. Um, we shouldn't get distracted by that. Okay. This is very much part a British parliamentary procedure, it is of no importance. What mattered was the vote on the proposal from the government itself to, on Theresa May's deal. And the reason Jeremy Corbyn decided to pull his amendment was that he wanted a clear vote on that one issue. And he got it, and we've seen the result, as I said, uh, an overwhelming landslide vote against Theresa May on a scale never seen before in British parliamentary history. All right. So what's 
what happens next. Uh, you mentioned Corbyn. News came out pretty much immediately that Corbyn is now looking for a vote of no confidence yeah. in the May government. Correct me if I'm wrong there. That's and, absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay, great. And I want you to comment on on a tweet. Tweets came out immediately as well from all across Europe. But one tweet really, really caught my eye, and that was the tweet of Donald Tusk. And I want you to to comment on his tweet as well as you as you go into what happens next. Yeah. Tusk tweeted, "If a deal is." impossible and no one wants no deal then who will finally have the courage to say what the only positive solution is he is basically saying that the only positive solution is for the uk to remain in the eu exactly so so alexander what's what's what happens yeah. now okay okay let, let, let's first of all start with uh, what theresa may herself said in the house of commons because i think this is absolutely crucial now it's absolutely correct that jeremy corbyn put down a vote of no confidence um however theresa may basically egged that on she asked she said if jeremy corbyn doesn't put down a vote of no confidence to be voted on tomorrow, then she would arrange for a vote of confidence in her government to be voted on tomorrow. The reason Theresa May did that is because it is almost unheard of. In fact, it is unprecedented in British parliamentary history for a government in Britain to lose a vote on an issue of such importance and continue with the same prime minister as before. In any normal set of circumstances, a prime minister who was defeated on a flagship policy in this way, on this scale, would immediately resign. Now, Theresa May doesn't want to resign for reasons best known to herself. So what she is doing is she is bringing forward the vote of no confidence that Jeremy Corbyn is proposing to be voted on tomorrow in the belief that she will win that vote of confidence and therefore be able to stay as prime minister. So this vote of confidence may not be quite the big thing that people expect, because I suppose that for Theresa May to call it on in this way, it must mean that she has already received uh, uh, assurances from some of the people who voted against her, who met most of the people who voted against her today, that they will vote with her tomorrow. So her parliamentary majority will therefore appear to be intact. Now, the next thing that she said is that she will then hold uh, uh, discussions with uh, various parliamentary leaders, including presumably Corbyn himself, to see whether or not a consensus can be reached within the House of Commons as to the way forward. I can't see how that's going to happen. I can't see what consensus exists. Um, so we have a situation where Ter Theresa May is going to cling on, where the government is going to hold on, where there's going to be discussions with the parliamentary leaders, and where she's going to presumably go back to Brussels for more discussions with the people there also. Coming to what Donald Tusk said, now Donald Tusk, clearly wants the British to reverse their Brexit decision. And I, there's no doubt at all that Donald Tusk is in close contact with the anti-Brexit, pro-EU MPs in Britain, led by people like Dominic Grieve. Um, Theresa May, however, went out of her way in her remarks to the British House of Commons today to rule out any possibility of Britain reversing the Brexit decision. That also appears to be Jeremy Corbyn's view. Given that that is so, if Theresa May remains Prime Minister after tomorrow, and given Jeremy Corbyn's own views, it may be that Donald Tusk's hope will not be realised and that after this process of consultation with the British parliamentary leaders is exhausted, 
And after the negotiations in Brussels come up with nothing, that we will start to move forward at last to the no Brexit position, which uh, Theresa May probably quietly accepts and which Jeremy Corbyn is known privately to favour. I have to say, it's also possible that, Derek, Je, that Donald Tusk knows things that we don't, and that we could be seeing some sort of groundwork for a parliamentary coup over the next few days. A, a parliamentary coup? Expand on that. Yeah, I mean, what could happen, and I mean, uh, is that the, we could see moves towards some kind of government of national confidence being set up by the pro-EU majority in the House of Commons, excluding both Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn. Who, who would lead uh, that? Who would lead that good, initiative? Very good question. Um, nobody knows. Dominic, Dominic Grieg, Grieg is a possibility. There might be other people within the Labour Party. Um, in fact, there's no shortage of people within the Labour Party who would love that, who would love such a thing. I have to say, if such a step is taken, um, we would have a political crisis in Britain, a crisis of confidence and of legitimacy, the like of which we have never seen before, because it would mean that both uh, Theresa May and uh, 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 Corbyn, the two leaders of the two parties, have been sidelined. And it would mean that a, a majority of MPs in the House of Commons are defying not just the Brexit referendum result, but also the mandates under which they were elected in the 2017 election, in which both the Labour and Conservative parties committed themselves to Brexit. So it would be an unprecedented, unprecedented situation in British history. But I have to say, I have to say, Alex, given the extraordinary situation we have in Britain at the moment, I cannot exclude it. What, what about the delay of Article 50 that we hear about? Yes. Till June yes. or July? Yes, yes. Uh, um, it, it's very interesting that Theresa May um, has not ruled that out. Um, I personally think, however, that she personally will be extremely reluctant to go down that road because if she did, it would provoke a crisis within the Conservative Party which I am sure would threaten her, her position and the survival of the, uh, of the Conservative Party itself as a unified force. So I think she will be extremely reluctant to go down that road. Um, if there's a parliamentary coup, it will happen. And in fact, we will see, as I said, an attempt to keep Britain within the European Union. Um, alternatively, we could see a, a, a second referendum being imposed on the country Though every opinion poll I have seen suggests that is not an option most people in Britain want. But um, one way or the other, it is very difficult to see anything being done to reverse Brexit now, which would be uh, uh, um, constitutional in the normal accepted sense of the word, or frankly, very democratic. But we'll just have to see what happens. The, the UK is hinting that they're open to delaying Article 50. Is, do you think that's accurate? The EU is, is hinting at this, and I think they would. I mean, I think that they would because from their point of view, they probably think that if Article 50 is extended, there won't be any, uh, uh, any Brexit at all. Um, though I come back to something we said on an earlier programme, I suspect there's some people in Brussels who would not be entirely sorry to see the British go for all sorts of reasons. But um, um, I think that is what people like Donald Trust, Trump Dust certainly want. And I think that, of course, there are people in Britain, in, in Parliament and in the, in, the, in the British civil service and elsewhere who, who, who would love to see that happen too. So after this, now with this vote having concluded and we have the no confidence vote, which I think you pretty much are, are saying that May will, will be okay after that vote. Um, she will remain as prime minister going forward. We still then really don't have much clarity as, as to where this thing is heading towards, do we? No, we have no clarity at all. As I've said many times, the logic of this situation, the political logic, points clearly towards a no-deal Brexit. 
As uh, uh, um, you, you have said many times, Alex, on our programs, and as is absolutely right, the people who are opposed to Brexit just don't give up. And we've seen over the last uh, week how the Speaker of the House of Commons has put his uh, uh, position of impartiality to one side and has changed parliamentary rules and procedure to try and make Brexit no more difficult or try and make no, no, a no-deal Brexit more difficult. And uh, we've seen how 20 Conservative MPs are willing to vote against their government essentially in order to prevent Brexit happening. We've seen this campaign for a no, a second referendum, which, as I said, nobody outside Parliament seems to want. So in this situation, one cannot say with any confidence that uh, uh, Brexit will definitely take place. What, to finish it out, Alexander, what needs to happen this so we have some sort of clarity? Or are we just going to basically wait till March? I think we have to wait and see. And that is a bitter and terrible truth to say. And of course, it is a disaster for uh, 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 Britain's uh, business community, which is now trapped right. in a situation of continuing uncertainty. And for the British people also. Either we're going to see a continuing parliamentary crisis. We will see, first of all, whether Theresa May does win this vote tomorrow. I mean, I think she will, this vote of confidence tomorrow. I think she will. I think, as I said, it's been organised so that she does. Um, we will see what happens with all these discussions that she's going to have with British parliamentary leaders and whether any of them will pay any attention to this. We will see whether Jeremy Corbyn buckles to the immense pressure he's coming under from members of the Parliamentary Labour Party to agree a second referendum. He's resisted that very strongly up to now, but the pressure on him to agree to it is extremely strong. And and we will see if um, uh, um, uh, parla parliamentary MPs, the MPs in Parliament, uh, the ministers and backbenchers of the Conservative and Labour parties who form the pro-EU majority, whether they will go behind uh, Theresa May's and Jeremy Corbyn's back to prevent Brexit happening um, um, and form the kind of parliamentary coup that we were talking about. And if, if May loses to, tomorrow's yeah. conference, well, so then what happens? Yes, I mean, if May loses a vote of no confidence, we will start to move towards a general election. Okay. Now, that would probably also require a delay to uh, 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 the 29th March deadline. But if there is a general election, the overwhelming probability in this kind of crisis situation is that Jeremy Corbyn will win it. And he is committed to proceeding with Brexit. It would not be a hard Brexit, a no deal Brexit. It would be a Brexit that kept Britain in the customs union. But it would be without the backstop, which is the thing that's been causing so much trouble. The, the EU said that they would not negotiate again. Do you think that's bullshit? I think it's bullshit. I think, you think they will come to the table again yeah, with May. I, 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 don't, I don't think they will come to the table again with May. But if Jeremy Corbyn wins an election uh, and says to the EU, uh, I, I, you know, I want to keep Britain in the customs union and in the single market, but I don't want the backstop, I think they will agree. Oh, OK, well, interesting. All right. We will be following this uh, more Brexit, you know, uh, news that comes out. It's as, as we said, rightly, as you noted, we really don't have much clarity as to what's going to happen. Maybe we are just going to be waiting until March 29th, I guess. <laughs> well, but, I, I, you know, very likely, Alex, in this situation, where it's, it's very possible. It's incredible. All right. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you liked this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video and visit the Duran shop. Pick up a t-shirt, help support the Duran in the description box down below. You will find links to our PayPal and Patreon pages. And of course, you can go to the Duran.com and see all the articles that Alexander links up every day. And you can also get a copy of this show in audio format on iTunes and SoundCloud. Ooh, the ending keeps on getting longer and longer for, for me. All right, Alexander Recurs, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Until next time, take care.